Hallelujah. 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 Worthy, O oh Lord God. Thou art worthy. Yes, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. You're yes, worthy, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, bless God your name, Father. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jehovah, I bless your holy name. For thou art holy, holy, holy. Yes, the Lord, Lord God Almighty is yes, holy. Lord. Holy is the Lord, Lord God. Holy. Hallelujah. Thou art holy, oh Lord. And I bless Hallelujah. your righteous Hallelujah. and holy Hallelujah. name. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I exalt thee, O oh Lord God, yes, and I God. magnify your name, O oh Lord God. Lord. Hallelujah. For your word is to be praised. You worthy of everything Hallelujah. that has breath is to praise you, O oh Lord God. Yes, God. Oh, hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, Father, hallelujah, God. hallelujah, hallelujah. You are God of gods and Lord of lords. Oh, Lord, God, God, you are thou shalt die yet yes, get it out. You are almighty God. And yes, I praise Lord. you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I praise hallelujah. you because you're hallelujah, worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy hallelujah. of the praise. You're worthy. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his so wonderful did work so to the children of men. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Jehovah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The hallelujah. The creator. Yes, Lord. Of mankind. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Lord. To worship and praise you. Oh, yes, my God. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the creation of man and woman. Hallelujah. 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 And you made woman for the man. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. your name, Lord. And I bless your righteous Lord, Lord. and holy hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. For great hallelujah. Thou art, O oh Lord. You are great, magnificent. Yes, God. Oh, you're King of kings. And Lord of lords. Oh, majesty. Yes. We bow the to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mighty Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince Lord. of Peace. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thou art worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe in God the Father, mighty. the creator 
Ministries. This is a special evening of teaching. I have the Apostles' Doctrine on Pagan Gods of the Bible. And this is something that I teach. And so tonight I found that I have a study that I did not preach on on one of the pagan gods of the Bible. So tonight we're going to be learning about the god Remphan. And so before we go into the message and before I pray, I'm going to, we just heard doxology music one is shofar by shofar and the christ calling call to worship with master prophetess king then we heard our apostles creed by emu music and now we're going to hear jehovah is your name by kinlight mercy <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Oh. 
to God. Jehovah is your name. She called to mighty in battle, the mighty God. Jesus Christ. The almighty God, El Shaddai. Jehovah is his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you that this, your word is powerful and it keeps us. It teaches us about the world today, about the world yesterday, about the world from Genesis. It teaches us that there is nothing new under the sun. And it teaches us about you, Almighty God, El Shaddai, Jehovah is your name. It teaches about the potentate king, Jesus Christ, your son, the mighty God. It teaches us about the Holy Spirit, the third God of the Trinity. The power of God. the Spirit of God. You teach us not just of the Trinity, but of other gods within the Bible. And you show us who they are. You show us what they do. And you lead us and guide us in righteousness. And so as I teach on this God tonight, 
I pray that every eye and ear is open in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray that you would enlighten their eyes of understanding that they may see. Uh, I pray that you will pull them out of the gates of hell. And that they will know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Yes. I pray that this word be planted and that they become conscious to more towards you. And that it would save the soul to eternal life, yes. eternal Lord, salvation. And Father, I pray that you would... Break the shackles, loose the people from the creator, creation, the gods that you say we serve, the creation more than the creator. And so, Father, I pray that it will loose those that serve the creation and serve the higher God, the most high God. El Elyon is, his, is your name, the supreme being. The one called Elohim who created all things, even the galaxies. So, Father, have your way and be glorified, Jehovah. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. amen. Apostle Reddick's Doctrine, and I am your Master Apostle Reddick of Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries. And tonight's Bible precept study service session is on the pagan god Refan. Re Refan. I'm sorry about mispronunciation if there is any. But the God, Rephan, because in one culture it's spelled R-E-P-H-A-N, is also the God Rimfan. Rimfan in Rimfan in Acts, the seventh chapter, if you could turn your Bibles there, if you're not already there, starting at the 40th verse. And so we must understand that Rimfon is the tabernacle of Malek. He sits in the tabernacle of Malek. And he's equivalent to, matter of fact, the Babylonian god of the stars, Kaiwan. And in two, as a Greek god, he's equal to, and his name is Saturn, called Star. So Rimfan, Rimfan is a star. It's the Saturn planet. Acts, the seventh chapter. And the Bible says it's a foreign astral deity. A foreign astral deity. Seven forty. Saying unto Aaron, this is the children of Israel, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we what not was it become of him. We don't know what became of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol. So he sacrificed unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Excuse me. God gave them up to worship the host of heaven. 
as it is written in the book of the prophets, O you house of Israel, you have offered to me slain beasts as sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness. Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Malek, or Malak here is the same as Malek, and the star of your god Rimphan, or Rimphan, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And it's amazing he says Babylon because it's a Babylonian god of the stars called Kaiwan. And I want you to understand that this particular god, he says, is the host of heaven. Now we're in, we see heaven, right? This is the first heaven. Remember I taught on heaven. So this is the first heaven. And at night, you see the constellations, you see the stars, and you see the moon, right? So you see the galaxy, but in the galaxy, there's a planet called Saturn, and this is the star god. He's in this first heaven. Now, some people teach that the galaxy area is the second heaven, but it is not because we can see it. It's the first heaven. You can call this first part where the birds fly A and the second part where we where the astronaut, astronauts have to put on this special uh, attire where they need oxygen coming through. And so... That part of the galaxy is, is still in the first heaven. Remember, the first and second heaven is divided by a body of water and cherubim above the water. So we must understand that he's saying the host of heaven, the first heaven. And we got to understand that when God says you worship the creation more than the creator, Elohim, Jehovah God, created Saturn. And you would rather worship Saturn than worship him. The one that gives the power, you don't want to worship. It's the one that he created that you think you're getting power from. You would rather worship. Now I want you to understand. The Bible says that. The star of your God. Rimphan. Rimphan. Which you made. Figures you made to worship them. He said it's a figure, but when I, when I be studying, it said this figure is a creature. They made an idol creature with their hands. They made this star. And so you've got to understand this creature. In the figure, sometimes we call them images, but the gods are creatures. Amos 5 verse 26 he says but you have borne the tabernacle of your Malak and Kayun Kayun is the other name the other God or the other deity the star of your God Kayun your images are we understanding? Malek and Kion, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. 
Therefore will I cause you to go... Oh, sorry, that's not what I want to read. 26, he says, but you have borne the tabernacle. That means you put them up in the tabernacle of Melech. Uh, secure, Sukkoth, your king. This Rephaim is the, is Sukkoth. This star in the NS, NASB is also called, he's also called Rephaim. Reem fan. I want you to understand that he's saying to be born. In other words, you, you made these idols and you set them up in the tabernacle of Malek, in the temple of Malek. Now I hope it's not the tabernacle of God and you put Malek, this little image, or in Kayun, on the tabernacle. Because, he says, this is a sophisticated, to be born, means nese, in the Hebrew. And it's pride and sophisticated worship of Rimfan. So here you worship in this God. You got pride in this God. But not Jehovah, the creator Elohim. He created Saturn in which you want to worship. And now I want you to understand. You built these tabernacles. You made them be in existence. You born them. You exalted. Born also means to exalt. Uh, that's the sophisticated worship. Uh, you born them. You created them. You put them up in the tabernacle. But what you did when you born them, when you exalted them, when you worshiped them sophisticatedly in pride, uh, what you did was you birthed iniquity. You birthed iniquity you made you forsook the lord and you made a contract of iniquity profaning the tabernacle of the lord I want you to understand what you do when you worship idol gods. As an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is my job, it is my assignment to make sure you understand the truth of God's word. And so when you born one of these idol gods, you birthed iniquity and you made a contract In profaning God's temple. This was what they did in Acts. This is what the children of Israel did in Amos. We must understand that the God Malak and Kayum, these were your images, the star of your gods. And you, he's saying, in pride, sophisticated worship, you exalt them. And you birthed iniquity and you made a contract and you forsook Jehovah God. You forsook Jehovah. First Kings 11. Now listen, this is the Lord speaking, verse 33, because that you have forsaken me and have worshiped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon. Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon. And have not walked.
walked in my ways to do that which is right in my eyes. See, sometimes we got to please ourselves and do what is right in our eyes. Uh, but God is saying to those that work in idolatry, you got to do things right in my eyes, uh, not in yours. You work in a little idolatry. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the one. Listen. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm a Jew. This is why I preach this even to the Christians and believers. Jude verse 21. It says, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. He says, and some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. You are spotting your garments in the eyes of God, worshiping other created, handmade gods. You are making a contract with iniquity, profaning the temple and the tabernacle. Don't you know you are the tabernacle of God? You are his temple. You have been profaning yourself. And when you worship these other gods, you get weak in the spirit. I want you to understand, Exodus, God don't give us messages like this. Unless he wants somebody free. Unless he wants people free. He's letting us know if we are the church and we are in idol worship, we're doing things right in our own eyes, not in the eyesight of God Almighty Jehovah. Exodus 28. And if you don't believe me, just go back to 1 Kings 11.33. Exodus 28.43. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity... And fall into eternal sleep. It shall be a statue forever unto him and his seed after him. I want you to know that the high priests, when they go before God, if they are bearing iniquity, they couldn't walk back out. They had to be pulled out. Because... The high priest had to have the rope tied around them. Because if they went before God, they entered into eternal sleep. And they had to be dragged out. They had to be pulled by that rope. You cannot bear iniquity in the house of God. Uh, what church are you at? Uh, if you are allowing idol worship, I'll be here to warn you, uh, and I'm trying to pull you out of the fire that you are doing right in your own eyes and not in the eyes of Jehovah God. And he's, he's telling us, uh, you are bearing iniquity. Back to Acts 7. I want you to understand that when you turn and you begin to born these gods, he says, I will give you up to them.
He says, verse 42, Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. He gave them up. You would rather worship my creation rather than me, Elohim, the creator, Jehovah God. So I'm going to take my protective covering from you and I'm going to let you worship that God. I'm going to give you over to him. I'm going to, I'm going to watch and see until you come to understand that you need to do right in my eyes and not in your own. He want to save you from hell. It's a planet that you're worshiping. A star, a creature. You can't get power from it. Power comes from God. The Apostle Paul is teaching us here. Our fathers, verse 44, had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. I want you to understand the tabernacle of witness appointed by God. I stand before you not as something made with wood or stubble, but I'm a tabernacle of witness. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is living on the inside of me. Because I have been converted and I'm trying to strengthen you today to let you know that you need the Holy Ghost, uh, the witness in the earth today uh, of Jehovah God. You are the tabernacle and you should not be worshiping any other God but Jehovah. But if you choose to, he says, I done gave you up. Uh, but this message is to let you know uh, that you can get forgiveness. You can turn back to God. Some of you have never tasted of the heavenly gift. And he's saying it's time to return to me.